Okay. All right, well, we are welcoming all of our Congressional Award participants, our community members. We are recording today's segment to be shared with everyone later. So I'm watching the numbers increase into the hundreds. We'll give everybody a moment to connect so that they can see us and hear us officially. This is very exciting. To everyone at home, I'd like to welcome our Congressional Award community. Thank you so much for participating today. My name is Erica Heiss. I serve as the National Director of the Congressional Award Foundation here in Washington, DC. Today's topic is entrepreneurship and personal finance, which has quickly become one of our most popular program offerings. We have about 800 attendees now participating on today's webinar. And of course, everything is made possible by our friends at Intuit. So we do thank them for sponsoring us uh, today. We are honored to have Congressman Don Payne Jr. from the great state of New Jersey and Congressman Anthony Gonzalez of Ohio serving as our congressional speakers today. We will of course be hearing from Mr. Donald Remy of the NCAA. And we have a special mes message from Congresswoman Joyce Beatty as well. So to begin, I'm gonna encourage everyone to acquaint themselves with the, the Q&A box where you could submit questions for today's speakers. So I'll encourage our participants to do that. And of course, as I mentioned, we are recording today's conversation. We'll be sharing it with everyone following today's webinar, along with a survey, which we encourage you all to send back to us. You will get a personal development credit for today if you are participating in the program. We are also streaming on Facebook Live. So I'll say hello to our Facebook community. And now we are just excited because we wanna get started with uh, the first of our speakers. So I mentioned the wonderful company Intuit who is partnering with us today. And it is my pleasure to introduce Sheldon Cummings who serves as the Chief Diversity, Equity and Inclusion Officer of our, our partner at Intuit. So Mr. Cummings, I will turn it over to you. <clears throat> so thank you. Thank you very much, Erica. Thank you to the Congressional Award Foundation for having me here today. And welcome to all the students, members of Congress, and more who are joining us. My name is Sheldon Cummings and I am Intuit's again, Chief Diversity, Equity and Inclusion Officer. Um, and at Intuit, our mission is to power prosperity around the world. And what that means is using our global technology platform to help our customers and communities overcome their most important financial challenges. Um, it's our products that help them through that. We believe that everyone should have the opportunity to prosper and we work tirelessly to find new and innovative ways to deliver on this belief. However, we know that not everyone has equal opportunity to prosper. And that's why we invest in diversity, equity and inclusion or DEI uh, as well as education. So, so starting with DEI uh, and Intuit, diversity, equity, inclusion are essential to our mission. For us, it's, it's not just something that we do, it is truly part of who we are. Uh, our commitment dates back to the late, late 90s. And, and then that's when employees wrote our operating values with an emphasis on it's the people. And all the way through 2003, where we formed our diversity council has been central to who we are. Today, we, we sit at the crux of two key challenges. On one hand, a global pandemic and heightened awareness of racial and gender inequality on the other. And this has only strengthened our conviction to continue fostering diversity and inclusion within the company uh, and driving greater social, societal transformation. So, and in two, we've invested in programs like our leading inclusively employee training and the development of our racial equity advanced leadership team. And we've done that inside the company and outside of our walls, we're addressing inequities by investing in job creation, education programs like the personal finance program, which invests in the financial success of the next generation. So we shift to education. Um, we've been supporting education initiatives for many years. Today's remote learning environment has heightened the unique challenges underrepresented minority students are facing in accessing equal and quality learning opportunities. In partnerships with organizations like the Congressional Award Foundation, we're committed to helping all students develop the skills they need to prepare for the 21st century jobs, as well as build a successful future. From bringing our real world tools into the classroom, tools like QuickBooks or TurboTax, Credit Karma and Mint, to developing the right financial habits, we believe a strong understanding of personal finance 
and business builds a foundation for students to own their future financial success. Our educational programs use tools to help students learn how to file taxes, create budgets, analyze spending habits, build strong credit scores, and much more. And as a result, we've seen 89% of students become more confident in managing their personal finances after going through our training. By approaching education with an intentional focus on DEI, we believe we have the opportunity to create equal opportunity for all students. So let me wrap up by highlighting our partnership with the Congressional Award Foundation and members of Congress. Our partnership is at the intersection of two critical elements I mentioned earlier, DEI and education. And it grew out of a shared commitment to empower students to manage their money through financial literacy. As an official Congressional Award Diversity and Inclusion Award partner, Intuit commits to serving students in underserved communities across the US by creating opportunities, economic and social mobility. And today I'm honored to celebrate and introduce the personal finance program. Developed with three key components, students will build their financial foundation, applying new skills to their own lives, as well as giving back to their community. The program was created to help students become self-reliant, financially informed, and capable of using their talent, resources, and personal business values to make the world a better place. It encourages them to embrace their entrepreneurial spirit and push the boundaries of the status quo. I'm thrilled to kick off today's webinar as you embark on this personal finance journey. And now um, it's my honor, truly an honor, to introduce Congressman Donald Payne Jr. of New Jersey. A Newark native, Representative Payne has served the, and the people of the 10th Congressional District since 2012. He is a tireless fighter for New Jersey families, American workers, and economic growth. In 2021, Representative Payne was appointed to the Chairman of the Subcommittee on Railroads, Pipelines, and Hazardous Materials, for the powerful House Committee of Transportation and Infrastructure. The committee has jurisdiction over national infrastructure and all models of transportation, including aviation and mass transit. In addition, he serves on the House Committee for Homeland Security, and he is a member of the Congressional Small Business Caucus. He led the Build America series to bring together government industry leaders, small women and minority owned businesses to create diversity in the federal government contracting projects. Thank you very, very much, Congressman Payne, for your leadership in Congress and your leadership here today. So with that, I will now pass it on to Congressman Donald Payne Jr. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Shannon, um, um, Shelter, for that wonderful introduction. Uh, very kind of you. And thank you for Intuit being a partner um, to help these young people um, learn financial literacy and good practices for the future. So good afternoon. Um, it's a real pleasure for me to be here for this webinar on financial literacy. I wanna thank the great people at the Congressional Award. Um, we've already met Erica and also Paxton Baker um, for, the, for the chance to speak with you today. Financial literacy has never been more important than right now. Today, there, are, there have never been more choices in how to pay for food, clothing, and other goods. And there had never been more opportunities to fall into debt. Poor financial responsibility can lead to poor credit and haunt you for your entire life. That is why it's important to learn how to handle your money now so you can keep it um, keep more of it later. There are a number of reasons why financial literacy is so critical right now. First, you're going to be responsible for your own savings plans and even possible retirement. You will not be able to count on a representative from your company or even a family member to understand the complex financial information. Second, there are way too many savings options. In the past, people put money into a simple savings account at a local bank and earned interest on it. But today, there's nothing simple about the savings options at your local bank. You will need to be able to determine which one is the best one for you. Third, the government's safety nets 
that helped your grandparents might be gone soon. You need to save and plan for your future now because government benefits such as Social Security might be greatly reduced when you get to that point. Fourth, you cannot trust outside markets to help you. Recently, the stock market showed how unstable it could be with the rise and fall of the stock in the video game supplier, GameStop. It rose from $20 to around $400 and then back to 50 in a couple of weeks. Some people made money, but a lot of people lost millions. You need to have the basic understanding of financial markets to avoid being one of those who loses money. Fifth, there are plenty of people and companies out here who will be glad to take your money if you're not educated. There is an old saying that says, a fool and his money are soon parted. There are so many ways to lose money from poor spending to applying for too many credit cards. You'll need certain amount of financial literacy to tell the beneficial cards and savings plans from the ones that will rob you over time. I hope that makes it clear why it is important to be financially literate and responsible. It might not help you have the most goods today, but it will help you have the most peace and fun in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Congressman, for those words. We appreciate your support of the program and this very important topic. Thank you, sir. Uh, it is now my pleasure to introduce Mr. Donald Remy of the NCAA. As COO, Mr. Remy is second in command behind the president, assuring smooth national office and governance functions and serving as primary liaison to the Board of Governors. Um, he actually does so much there that uh, I, I can't believe he has time for today, but I'm so excited that he does. Uh, he oversees as CLO effective legal government relations and policy strategy. He has over 30 years of experience, serves on many boards, and is active in a venture capital fund. He has a bachelor's degree in political science from Louisiana, Louisiana State University, where he was commissioned as a second lieutenant in the U.S. Army. He received a Juris Doctorate from the Howard University School of Law. Mr. Remy, thank you so much for being here and for sharing your experiences with today's students. Welcome. Well, thank you, Erica, for the opportunity to be with you and to engage with tomorrow's leaders who are on the call. Uh, the, you know, look, the Congressional Award Foundation Personal Financial Literacy Program is an exciting skills development opportunity for you all. And I've got to tell you that, that I'm just delighted to be involved. I want to say thank you to the foundation in particular, and thank you, you guys have met Erica, but thank you to Paxton Baker and others who helped put this program on. I'm also honored and privileged to join such a distinguished panel, Representatives Payne and Gonzalez. It's good to see you all again and good to be sharing a Zoom stage with you. Of course, you and I, Congressman Gonzalez, recently shared another Zoom on an entirely different hot topic. And Congressman Payne, as we were just discussing a little while ago, as we approach March Madness, I'm reminded of the many good times we've all had at the Final Four and I'm looking forward to the Final Four in the future, you all, I suspect, have had an opportunity to listen to Congresswoman Beatty's message to us, and it demonstrates her commitment to this topic through her legislative and her policy initiatives. And I'm happy to have been personally and organizationally supportive of her leadership and her progress. And, and Mr. Cummings, who kicked it off for us, it's great to meet you, to hear your story, to hear all of the great things that are going on at Intuit including your diversity, inclusion, and equity initiatives, and of course, this personal finance program. All of it fascinating indeed, and I want to thank you and thank Intuit for partnering to make this effort possible. Look, let me start here. I was lucky. At around the age of 12, my parents sat me down and began to explain personal finance to me. They helped me set up a passbook savings account. Now, you young folks probably don't know what that is. I'm dating myself, I understand, but it's a little booklet that you can keep track of your money in 
that we had when I was a youngster your age. And, and, and my parents taught me how to balance a checking account. Why would I need a checking account for my paper route, for my grass cutting business, for my snow shoveling business to help me understand money in, money out? My older sister, she introduced me to the stock market when I was in college and she taught me how to invest. So you see, not only was I a budding entrepreneur, I also used the money I made to make money. But I keenly understand that my story is not everyone's story. And everybody doesn't have that type of support network at their fingertips. Indeed, in my current role at the NCAA, I sadly have witnessed way too many young athletes fail to understand the simple principles of financial literacy and the value of building a solid foundation for a strong financial future. You likely have read or have watched the story of former Kentucky star Antoine Walker. And as he shares in his lectures, he unfortunately was not the exception. So how do you avoid these pitfalls? Well, clearly you're interested in doing that or else you wouldn't be on this seminar today. You're already starting to understand that you need financial literacy education to succeed. So you should understand you start as early as possible, but it's never too late to gain a strong hold on what it means to be financially literate. You participate in events like this one and other events, gather as much data and information as you can, just have an insatiable appetite to learn and then apply that learning to your own practices. Understand how your financial acumen can reach marginalized community, communities all across the country and significantly impact economic and social mobility for everyone around you. When you think about the realities that actions you take as individuals can impact your siblings, your parents, your cousins, your grandparents, everybody on your block. It should be a motivator to you to understand and gather the tools and then apply those tools towards success. Secondly, don't be afraid to embrace your entrepreneurial, your entrepreneurial dreams. Look, I'm here to tell you, you, you might fail more than once in fact, but you shouldn't let that dissuade you. If you have that entrepreneurial spirit in you, use it and use it over and over again. And eventually, and it may happen in fits and starts, you will see successes. And the more you succeed, the happier you'll be with yourself, but you can't just stand on the sidelines and think, I wanna be an entrepreneur without taking adequate steps to put you in a position to be a successful entrepreneur. So if you fail along the way, don't walk away, keep pushing forward. And thirdly, you know, there are many ways to express your entrepreneurship. I've explored three in my lifetime. You can run your own business. It's challenging, but you can do it. I know you can. You can be entrepreneurial within an organization. And I hope we get a chance to talk a little bit about that. You know, people look at my career or where I am right now and they say, well, you're, you're in a corporate structure. How can you be entrepreneurial in a corporate structure? I'm here to tell you, you can. There are creative things that you can do within an organization to make it operate better that you can use in various other life circumstances. And thirdly, you can be a businessman or a businesswoman as part of your side hustle. It was mentioned in my introduction that I'm part of an active venture capital fund. That doesn't have anything to do with my work here at the NCAA but it's a component of what I do and how I engage and how I get satisfaction of participating in the marketplace. So no matter your path, and even if you pursue them all, it'll all start with the basics. So I hope that today will help you on your journey, no matter what stage you're in, and we all can provide you information that will help you be successful in the future. Again, thank you for the opportunity to address the group and I look forward to answering some of your questions as we go on. Mr. Remy, thank you so much. Is uh, Congressman Gonzalez and I are, are nodding our heads because I think so much of that resonates with us. Um, 
I know you're sticking around and you're going to answer some questions. We have a ton of questions that are coming in, which is great. We have hundreds of participants on uh, today's webinar and also joining us on Facebook Live. So we will see you again in a moment. Thank you, sir. I am pleased to welcome Congressman Anthony Gonzalez of Ohio's 16th District. Thank you, Congressman, for joining us. Uh, we're really excited to hear your remarks today. You serve as the vice chair of the Subcommittee on Diversity and Inclusion for Financial Services, which is just so critical for the work that we do here at the Congressional Award in encouraging our young people, this age group between 14 and 24, to understand the fundamentals of their financial future and preparation. Um, you have had a, a tremendous career you know, as well and, and have gone through um, a, number, a number of different sort of phases of life as, as well before coming to Capitol Hill. Um, I think a lot of you know us, or a lot of us know you for five seasons with the NFL. Um, you also went to Stanford Business School. You launched a career in the technology industry, and now you are a, a member of Congress. You're serving in the Science, Space, and Technology Committee, as well as Financial Services. So um, we know that you have so much to share with us, and we're so excited. Thank you for being here, sir. Well, thank you so much, Erica. Thank you for having me. Thank you for putting this on to the Congressional Award and to Intuit uh, for, for all that you've done today. Uh, and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's, it's such an honor uh, to be able to address you on a topic that I've been passionate about uh, for my entire adult life, which is financial literacy. Uh, my introduction to financial literacy, frankly, was in my NFL career. Uh, so I, I got drafted by the Colts. I was, you know, I guess, 23, 22 years old. Um, I, I may have had a checkbook, but I, I didn't really know what to do with it. Uh, and and I, I was completely clueless. And I remember we, we went to um, what's called the Rookie Symposium. And it's, uh, it's an event where they bring all the drafted players from around the NFL. You're there for about a week. And they teach you a lot of different things, um, kind of how to stay out of trouble, uh, but also some building blocks on financial literacy. And I, I'll never forget uh, there was a, a gentleman speaking in front of the entire uh, crowd, you know, a couple hundred people. And the question was, how many of you feel like you have all the financial skills you need uh, to manage your money for the rest of your life? Raise your hand. And, you know, there were actually more hands than I thought should have been raised. Uh, but I can tell you my hand was not raised. Um, and because I knew what I didn't know. And, and I think that that might be um, sort of the start of, of something is, is being honest with yourself uh, about where you are in, in your financial journey uh, and, and being okay with the answer if it's, you know, I'm at the very beginning or, or maybe, I'm, maybe I'm not financially literate at the time, um, but, I, but I know I can get there. Uh, and I remember it scared me and I thought to myself, boy, I've got a lot of catching up to do uh, because when you look around the world uh, and you look around the country and you turn on the television, uh, it sure seemed like a lot of people had some information that I just didn't uh, when, when it comes, comes to finance. Um, the good news is it's a totally winnable game. Uh, everything that, that you need to know, everything that you need to learn uh, is well within your grasp. Now, they throw some goofy terminology at you that you've never heard before, and it makes you feel like you're, you're learning a whole new language uh, at times, and, and that's fine, uh, and that's fine. Um, because all of it's learnable. Uh, and it's all basically math uh, when you boil it down. Uh, it's adding and subtracting, it's multiplying, it's dividing. Uh, it's, it's the basic mathematical skills that, that you've, you've used your entire life now just applied uh, to, the, to the world of finance. Um, and you know, what you realize as you start is you know, what you're really on is a journey in my opinion. This is how I look at it for myself. Uh, I started financially illiterate, as I said, when I got into the NFL. I didn't really know what I was doing, um, and I was honest with myself about that. Uh, what you hope to become quickly is literate, and you know the courses, the modules that that Intuit has put together, they will they will absolutely get you there, uh, where you know you you start to understand the world of finance and you start to understand what you need to do uh, to to be able to take care of your family, to be able to take care of your communities and to be able to build a, a financially stable life, uh, which is a great gift to have, uh, and, and you can get there. What you wanna do is you wanna go from being financially illiterate, where I was, to literate, to proficient, and then to dominant. And that's a journey that takes place over your entire life. Uh, and, and I think what, what uh, Mr. Remy said 
uh, was absolutely true, which is, you know, you're going to make a ton of mistakes along the way. I make mistakes every day, uh, and and I'll I'll continue to do it, um, and that's okay. Uh, what you should want is to is to make sure your mistakes are small, uh, and your learning is big, uh, and so you're you're learning big chunks of information every time you make a small little error, uh, and you slowly grow over time. Uh, but you're only going to get there if if you stay stay humble, uh, stay hungry, uh, and and never stop learning. Uh, and if you if you apply that mindset uh, again with with great resources from from Intuit and the Congressional Ward, uh, I have no doubt in my mind uh, that that everybody has well within their capabilities uh, the ability to not only become financially literate but proficient and then dominant. Uh, and so I, I just want to thank you all uh, again for for the opportunity uh, to spend a few brief minutes with you. Uh, it, it truly is an honor. Uh, thank you, Erica, for, for inviting me. Thanks for putting this together. Uh, and as we say in Congress, I will yield back. So thank you. <laughs> Congressman, thank you so much. Uh, words of wisdom. And I, I guess I have one just quick question uh, that was just asked by one of our students. Is there a place where you go for your financial information? Do you listen to podcasts or their you know, news outlets or apps or anything that you use that you just might uh, share with our students? Yeah, sure. So I happen to have my phone sitting here. Um, so one podcast that I listen to pretty much every day uh, is the Journal podcast from the Wall Street Journal. Yeah. That's, that's the Journal podcast. Uh, I also listen to this thing called Masters in Business, um, which is a Bloomberg uh, podcast. And then I, I tend to, I don't fully read the Wall Street Journal, but I'll skim through it. And if I see an article that I like, I'll, I'll pick it up. Um, and then beyond that, you know, I'll tell you what's a, a pretty neat resource. CNBC has archived every interview that Warren Buffett has done. Uh, and you can, you can go into, and all the way back to like the 70s, and you can go into this website. I forget, it's like cnbc.com slash Buffett or archives or something. You can Google it. Um, and you type in whatever you want. Type in interest rates. And there'll be three clips on Warren Buffett talking about interest rates. If you want Warren Buffett talking about the company Apple, type in Apple. You can hear all of his thoughts on Apple. Um, and, and it's a really neat resource. Um, but the, the truth is, it's kind of what I said, like I don't have one resource. What I have is, is, a, um, is a desire and a hunger to just keep learning. And that I'll take, I'll take information and knowledge wherever it comes from. Excellent. Well, thank you for the advice. And we know that you have a busy uh, legislative calendar today. So uh, we'll let you go. But we, we greatly appreciate your time and uh, all of your participation and, and service to this program. Thank you, Thank sir. You. Thanks. All right. We're ready for questions. Uh, Mr. Remy, you know, the pressure is on, as I said. We're so excited. Um, perhaps not an unusual first question, but what has, has come up with our, our students right away is uh, sharing information about the venture uh, capital group that you're a part of. What what does that mean? And can you just share a little information uh, about what a group like that uh, entails, what it does, and and uh, what it is that you look to do? Sure. And thank you, Erica. It, you know that's an interesting question because it took a little while for us to get this off the ground. So think Shark Tank, right? I want to make it spectacular. We're not anywhere near as cool as, but but just think Shark Tank for for a second. Uh, this is a, a, a group of guys that are like-minded that thought, why don't we pool our resources together and why don't we explore possibilities of investing in startup companies? And we've been doing this together for about eight years now. Um, you know, we had fits and starts. There were some people that came in and left out, but we're a core group of, of eight guys and we get together weekly. Um, we've pooled our resources together and we've invested in a variety of different startup companies some we take management positions or board positions to make sure that we can participate in the operating of the company. And sometimes we buy real estate properties. And then, you know, for example, we have a couple of malls where we fill the malls with local businesses and help those businesses become successful. And at the same time, we own the real estate and, and, and we, have, we can engage with the, the local businesses to help them be success, successful. Sometimes we make passive investments. We try not to do that. We wanna be actively involved in the operations of any 
business that we invest in, particularly when you're talking about angel investments in startup companies, so that we can bring our expertise to bear. This is a group of people that are, are lawyers and doctors and executives and business people and, and hedge fund, former hedge fund managers and the like. And, and we just got together. We like each other. We like working together. We like doing business together. And, and it's a terrific way to actually make money and to do something that you really enjoy and love doing. That's very interesting. I know that we started at sort of a sophisticated level, so I'll, I'll bring it back to basics. We have a few questions coming from different parts of the country, one here from Redwood City, California, about saving. How, how do you save money, especially as a teenager? If you're a teenager or maybe a college student, how do you start thinking about saving and, and what, would you, uh, what would you suggest? Well, the first thing is discipline, right? The, you, you've got to develop a budget and you have to make sure that you manage to that budget. There will be temptation to spend, right? Your, your friends, you know, the people you're going to school with, everybody, you know, and, and you guys have a, a much greater challenge than I did growing up because there's this Facebook Live. There, there's all of this technology out there where all of your colleagues are actually engaging in consumerism in a way that, you know, sometimes encourages people to, to try to keep up. What I would offer is be disciplined about the way you approach managing your money. Yes, set aside money to do those things that you really will enjoy doing. You, you have to have some life along with your planning, your budgeting, your strategies and your activity. Put money in a savings account, put money uh, away in a, in, you know, in, in a longer term investment where you can't get a hold of it. Right, a money market fund or something like that, where that money is set aside and it and it it will grow for you, but you can't have immediate access to it, and that reduces the temptation. That's that's very wise discipline. Discipline. A lot of our students know about discipline just from the goal setting and all the uh, areas that they are working towards. So, financial uh, literacy and independence is is probably no different. We have some questions coming about debt and paying off debt uh, versus saving. Do you have any, any uh, suggestions to our students about that, especially if you're maybe in college and you're already maybe a little behind on either a credit card or borrowing money? What, what would you think students should focus on there? Well, you know, as students right now, early on, my advice would be to try to avoid too much debt as much as possible. Obviously, some would tell you money's cheap right now, and, and so getting some debt might not, might not hurt you as much. But as an individual starting out, you, you really should try to avoid getting significant debt. Sometimes that's not possible, right? Sometimes you're going to take out student loans. For example, you may need to use a credit card in order to make purchases. If you can, your plan, your budget should be to pay off that credit card at the end of each month. And if you keep that discipline up, then you'll avoid the slippery slope into debt that you can't dig your way out of. And, and that's what you want to try to avoid. Um, certainly a little bit of debt might be necessary for some people and I recognize that, but a significant debt is not. And as best you can, try not to take on so much debt that you, you don't have the ability to dig out of it and if you have credit cards, try to pay them off every month. So Jordan from Sacramento is asking about how to avoid common financial mistakes. So not having that discipline, you know, perhaps not paying off your credit card at the end of every month. Any other common mistakes that you can think of that you would share? There are a lot of mistakes, you know, but part of the question was how to avoid them. And one way to avoid them is to plan, right? I talked about budgeting earlier. You all, I'm sure, do this in your schooling. You sit down, you figure out what you're gonna do with your curriculum through the syllabus for each of your classes, and you make plans. Do the same thing in your life. Do the same thing with your financial circumstances. Plan things out and try to live to those plans as best as possible. Again, I will say, I recognize sometimes life will throw you a curveball and you may have to do something different, but focus on what you've laid out, whether it's a one year, three year, five year, make plans and stick to them. Excellent. 
Excellent. So I'm going to jump a little bit into the entrepreneurial space. Um, you mentioned that you are, in fact, an entrepreneur, yet you are in the corporate environment. Tell us how, how you are an entrepreneur in that environment and what are some good first steps for students that are interested in barking uh, into that space? Yeah, so, you know, there are a couple of things. There's one, you can do things on the side, but what I was referring to, of course, is what do you do inside of an organization? And organizations all want to improve. They are engaged in process improvement on a regular basis. And they're looking for creative ideas to make whatever their product is or whatever their service is more attractive to their clients or consumers. And so within an organization, you can take steps, you can be involved in process improvement that is the same as what you would do entrepreneurially outside of an organization. It, it, whether it's bringing a new product to the market or it's providing a service in a different way or it's just looking at the structure of an organization and changing it for efficiencies to make the organization operate better. And all of those things that you can do inside of an organization, once you leave, you can deploy if you wanna have your own business as well. But I believe regardless of what level you are in, in an organization, whether you're the top person or your entry level, your ideas, your perspectives, your engagement, your enthusiasm are all part of the success of that organization. And if you have an entrepreneurial spirit, work with your colleagues, work with those who you work for and talk to them about bringing those ideas within that structure to bear. I, I, I'm guessing that Intuit had some very creative people just like you all that said, hey, I've got some ideas. Let's bring this into the organization and create this opportunity for the congressional award. So you talked a little bit about motivations. There's there's so many motivations for people uh, to be an entrepreneur. Obviously, there's a financial motivation, but there are others. I mean, we're much more socially aware. We're thinking about causes. We're thinking about community impact. Can you talk a little bit about what your motivations are uh, in being an entrepreneur? Yeah, it's interesting. My my motivations are driven by you know community interest, and I look for mission driven opportunities and enterprises. That's been the hallmark, hallmark of my career. And, and wherever I go, I try to make sure that whatever business endeavor I'm engaged in, it actually not only can make money, but the primary motivation really is that it can make an impact. It can make an impact on the communities that I desire to serve along the way. It can make an impact on others who may be aspiring to go in a direction that I've already been. And, and so that, that's what motivates me. I, I'm, I'm not one of those individuals who's motivated by money. If you look over my career, you'll see there have been a lot of steps that I've taken throughout a career that have nothing at all to do with revenue generation or income, uh, but rather have to do with what I believe in and how I can make a difference. I'll also add, it wasn't part of the question, that's how I invest. When, when I think about organizations to invest in, whether it's through the venture capital fund or it's my own personal portfolio, I think about how are these businesses being helpful in a way that I think is impactful to the communities that I believe need to be served. A great answer. It ties so nicely into the values of our program and the spirit of the Congressional Award. Uh, we love that. We need to mention, we are obviously in the midst of a pandemic and that has an impact on investing, on starting a business, becoming an entrepreneur. Can you speak to any of those challenges and or you know, differences and benefits that you've seen in the last 12 months? <laughs> well, one of the benefits is I don't have to travel, right? We, we, <laughs> we all have put down the, the airplanes for the moment and we're in the Zoom where it happens. Right, so we are able to engage in a different way, a different modicum of communication than perhaps we're used to, but it, it has proved to be almost equally as effective. And I say almost because there's nothing like, in my judgment, engagement person to person. Yet technology has allowed us to communicate at a much more rapid 
at a much more rapid pace to many, many poor, more people. Look, we're on this call with hundreds of people. This, this generally couldn't happen, but for this type of approach. Yes, we could all come together in a ballroom in Washington or somewhere else, but technology has enabled us to be more efficient with our time. And, and I think that's a good thing. So on, on the good side, less travel, more efficiency. On the bad side, you miss the opportunity to engage with people face to face. That's for sure. That's for sure. Um, so we, we have just, I have to go back to asking about investing. A lot of folks are asking about investing in the stock market for the first time and how scary and overwhelming that can be. Are there any good first steps there uh, that you would, might suggest? Well, as Congressman Gonzalez said, education, learn, gather information, understand, read books. I know you all are engaged in learning. You wouldn't be here if you weren't um, to try to understand the market better. But also you, you have to be patient and understand as well, engagement in the market is a long-term proposition. Are there people that short sell? Of course there are. Are there people that get in and out? Of course there are, but the, the true gains through investing in the stock market occur over time. And, and so be patient and understand that you might make an investment in one thing one day and it, it, it not turn out the way you hoped it would, but you have another investment that's twice as, as good as you thought it might be. So, you know, patience is important. Learning, understanding the market, understanding how the market works is equally important. How do you start? Um, you start by just jumping in. I mean, you know, go to your bank. Heck, you guys are all app proficient. You're technologically proficient. I'm not going to give a commercial to any particular app, but there are lots of apps out there nowadays that you can use to invest in the market that weren't out there many years ago. You know, in my days, you get to call a broker and the broker have to place the trade. You don't have to do that anymore. It's pretty easy. And I know Intuit has products that are available to you that you can use to invest in the market and they have education available to you that you can use to understand how those apps work. Wonderful. We are about to hear from our good friend, Jared at Intuit, who is gonna talk a little bit about the module itself and just kind of run through the ins and outs of what some of the students will be learning and have access to. So hang on tight guys uh, to all of our students out there asking questions about that. But I wanna just leave one last question, which is really just an open question for you, uh, Mr. Remy on, best piece of advice, right, that you've ever received or that you ever given. With this age group, again, 14 through 24, most of the students today are in high school getting ready to either enter the workforce or attend college. Folks have lots of great ideas. Um, you know, they, they want to make the right choices and, and they are asking, what is your best piece of advice? Well, as it relates to the program we're talking about today in financial literacy, I, I think establishing credit early and maintaining that credit over a lifetime will put you in a position where you can get resources to do what you want to do. I, I spent many years, it wasn't in the introduction at Fannie Mae um, as an executive there in the financial services industry. And of course, what we did was we provided um, opportunities for lending for home ownership. And through my learnings there, I realized that those who didn't have good credit, who did not establish and maintain that credit, had less of a likelihood of reaching that American dream of home, home ownership because of those challenges. So if you, if, if, if you have parents that can put you as an authorized user on their credit card early, um, or if you can open up a credit card and, and use it sparingly, but as I mentioned earlier, pay it off early. And you can maintain a, a level of credit that can help you not just with your personal finance, with your business finance later on, I, I think you'll be well served. Wonderful advice. Thank you so much for sharing this uh, important information with us and all of your guidance coming from just uh, some amazing experiences across your career and all of your professional development. Thank you for your time today, sir. Greatly appreciate it. Good to see you. Good to see you too, Erica. And thank you. And thank you to the Congressional Award. Excellent. 
Well, like I mentioned, we are going to talk a little bit more about our partnership with Intuit and the module that's available to our students. Uh, we have a lot of students on, on this webinar with us, Jared, but we also have parents and we have teachers, we have educators, and we have folks asking, you know, how can I teach my, my son or daughter? How can I bring this to my classroom? Um, I think we have a great reach here available to us, Jared. So um, one, thank you to you and to your team for helping us develop this fantastic module that's available, not just to Congressional Award students, but any student who wants to do it. Um, and I'm gonna turn it over to you to share with us a little bit about that and, uh, and then see you know, what questions we might have. Okay, awesome. Thank you, Erica. And to uh, hello to everyone from around the country. Um, I'm be ex like beyond excited to hear that we have over 800 people listening on Zoom as well as Facebook Live. Um, as you've heard, we're proud to launch the personal finance program with the Congressional Awards um, to really achieve three key outcomes. One is to increase financial literacy and help build the strong foundation that you need for your financial future. Two is to build confidence in your financial abilities and your entrepreneurial spirit. And number three is to achieve a strong understanding of finances and understand how it can impact economic and social mobility, regardless of your zip code, educational background, or race. With the remaining time we have, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna quickly cover the Congressional Awards website and the landing page. I'm gonna go through the modules that will help you build the financial foundation that we've gone through with the last 50 minutes. Um, we'll cover some of the activities to help you apply your newly developed skills to your life, and then share some quick examples of how you can give back to your community with personal finance in mind. So with that, what I'm actually gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and share my screen if you can go ahead and give me one second here. All right, so what we are looking at here is the Congressional Awards landing page for the Personal Finance Program. This page is what you should bookmark and always come back to as your resource. Because what we're going to do is take you through basically three key pillars and steps to help you create uh, the financial success that you will need for later on in life. Number one is learning the foundations. Number two is how you apply it to your life. And then number three is actually how you give back to the community and teach others and create awareness for personal finance. So when you go to the landing page, first and foremost, you can lead a little bit about the program itself and why we're here today. And if you have not registered for the Congressional Awards Program, you can go ahead and do that as step number one. Step number two is we're going to actually take you through um, online simulations and modules that we've partnered with EverFi to bring to you. Um, this can be done with asynchronous learning and uh, allow the students to go through this on their own and not necessarily take it as part of a class. Once you go through and actually finish the foundations and the learning of personal finance, you then actually get to help Isaiah um, help fix his life using Mint and TurboTax and apply it to uh, basically help him learn his credit score, how to build a budget. Isaiah has a problem with coffee and likes to go to the coffee shop a little bit too much. His credit score is a little bit too low, so you get to help him bring that up. Once you finish with step three, you get to move on to step four, and this is where you get to apply those skills to your life. Um, taking into consideration uh, everything that you've learned from the foundation, going through Isaiah, and then applying it to you. So building a budget, going through credit, going through savings, and then last but not least, taxes. And then once we finish that is when uh, you actually get to give back. You get to teach others and spread awareness of personal finance. We provide some opportunities here, which we'll go through in a second, but you are not limited to just these opportunities. So let me go ahead in just a couple of minutes, I'm gonna deep dive uh, into some of these. So number one is the actual website that has the foundations for you. We have four key playlists. Um, that start with financial foundations, investing in your future, building financial capability, and adulting. Each one of these playlists have anywhere from 8 to 12 modules that take roughly 5 to 10 minutes, and it will start with a pretest, 
and it will end with a post survey question just to help you understand where you are along this journey. I believe it was uh, Congressman Gonzalez that talked about the journey from starting in his NFL career to how he learned over time. And this isn't something you can do all at one given moment. So again, here is just one quick example of where maybe it's checking accounts, maybe it's credit cards, maybe it's healthy financial habits, and you can see it's anything from five to 10 minutes each. Once you go ahead and you actually finish the foundations portion of the material, you get to move on to step, step three, which is actually helping Isaiah with his uh, fictional life. So what you're going to do is, Erica called out earlier, um, Mint is the proud maker of TurboTax, QuickBooks, Credit Karma, and Mint. And what you're actually doing is creating a fictional account, and you're going to help Isaiah through his life. And so what we've done is we've put together a checklist for you, help you uh, with a step-by-step -step guide, connect to Mint. So make sure that you follow each and every step um, to actually help Isaiah fix whether it's his credit score, it's his budgets, the whole nine yards. And then you actually get to make it to the activities. And in these activities, we cover five key areas. It goes through Mint itself. We'll compare savings accounts. We will go through budgeting income and expenses. We will evaluate different types of credit card offers. And then we'll analyze a credit, a credit report and score. I did see a lot of questions come up in the chat that started with, how do I get started with a credit card? How do I build my uh, my credit score. What do I need to do? We talked about debt. And this is something that we will actually go through. And these are just online fillable PDFs that you can actually go ahead and type in while you're helping Isaiah fix his life. Once you finish going through and helping Isaiah, that's when you get to apply it to yourself. And so this is just one of the examples through budgeting. And so when we look at the budgeting activity, we get to start with topics. Um, maybe it's how do we create a budget? What tools should we be using to go through a budget? Once you start to develop these habits and learn and actually create this awareness, we then dive into the expanded learning. And this is where we want you to communicate with others. We know that personal finance is one of those topics that's really taboo that people don't wanna talk about. And unfortunately, most people will learn about personal finances is through mistakes, which is what, uh, if you recall, um, Mr. Remy earlier talking about is, hopefully you can make these mistakes that are so small that you can actually learn from them later on. But so what we'll actually have you do is talk to others. Maybe it's um, a teacher, maybe it's a friend, maybe it's a parent and actually see maybe what do they do with their budget. And then once you're done with that, you get to actually create a budget for yourself. And then last but not least, again, uh, you are more than welcome to go through any uh, community give back and volunteerism, but we just provide a couple for you. So whether you wanna work with junior achievement or financial beginnings that are on the Congressional Awards website, or you can work with your local classroom, maybe work with your local library, um, teach a group of friends, whatever you wanna do to help promote the awareness and start everyone's journey on personal finance. And so I know we only have a couple minutes left, but with that, um, what I will go ahead and do is actually hand it off back to you, Erica. Wonderful, thank you very much. Uh, very informative, all available on our website, congressionalaward.org. And in roughly, uh, Jared, it, it's about 30 hours, although give or take depends on the pace in which you go through the whole module. And for our students who may be looking to achieve the next level of the congressional award, all those hours can be counted toward the program. So uh, I really wanna just emphasize that. And for any students, who are not already enrolled in the program. Uh, Jerry just pointed out how to do that on our website. We encourage you to do it, uh, but you don't have to. We want everyone to feel that they can take advantage of this module. If you are representing a school or if you have you know, children that you would like to bring this module to, we, we encourage that as well. And of course, you can always contact us with any questions. Uh, Jared, I want to thank you so much for walking us through that, for you and the Intuit team, for your partnership, for your support, for your enthusiasm and passion. Uh, I always tell everybody I am an avid user of Mint, which is a fantastic app. We, we did have quite a few questions about what app do I use? Is there something I can use to help me with my budget or learn more about credit cards or debt or you know savings? That app I've loved for years. So um, I will encourage students to check it out. 
And we all know that for those of us starting small businesses, QuickBooks is another uh, great Intuit product and TurboTax, which you know everybody needs to be able to learn how to file taxes. Um, and that's a very simplified way of doing it. So thank you for that. And uh, we will probably see you again very soon from the Congressional Award team. Thanks, Jared. Thanks, Erica. To all of our participants, thank you for joining us today. As I mentioned, we will be sending a survey following the end of this webinar. We encourage you to share some data with us because it will help us shape our continuing programming, especially in this financial literacy and entrepreneurship series. We'd love to hear from you what information you'd like to see come next and opportunities to chat with leaders and gain some additional uh, insights to help you with your financial future. Um, we, we love all of the feedback, all the comments, the questions. Uh, we were able to answer quite a few of them, but um, we'll, see it, we'll see you guys next time. So thank you all so much. Enjoy the rest of the afternoon. Take care.